In this video, we're going to look at displacement time graphs. In this example, we've got a person walking their dog, and we're asked to describe the journey and support our answer with calculation. On the y-axis, we've got displacement, which is given the symbol s, and the unit for that is meters. On the x-axis, we've got time, and the symbol for that is t, and it's measured in the units seconds. Okay, let's start at t equals zero, where the displacement is zero, and you can see that the displacement is increasing at a steady rate. Okay, in the first 10 seconds, it's covering around 50 meters. In the second 10 seconds, it's covering around another 50 meters. So we can see it's a constant velocity in the forward direction. The important thing to know about a displacement time graph is the gradient. Okay, that's the important, most important feature. So gradient is changing y with change in x. And in this case, we've got change in y, which is change in displacement divided by change in x, which is change in time. So change in displacement over change in time, hopefully you realize, is the definition of velocity, which is the rate of change of displacement. So the gradient represents the velocity of the object. Okay, that's very important to keep in mind during displacement and while interpreting displacement time graphs. Okay, so let's use that to figure out the velocity here. So we're going to use change in y over change in x, so we can actually calculate the velocity in the first section. So I'm going to pick out the values here. So in the change in y, I'm going from 0 to 60, so 60 meters. And change in x, I'm going from 0 to 40, so 40 seconds. Uh, 60 divided by 40 seconds, that gives me 1.5 meters per second. In the second part of the journey, the person's displacement stays at 60 meters. So this means that the person is not moving, they're at rest, zero meet velocity of zero meters per second. Okay, then afterwards, the displacement starts to decrease. They're going back to where they started, but they don't quite make it there. They end up going to almost 35 meters. Okay, so, the, and you can see here, it's a steady decrease in the displacement. So that means it's a constant negative velocity. They're going backwards at a steady rate. Okay, they, for example, they might be walking backwards while before they were walking a bit faster. Okay, so let's use change in y with change in x to find the speed at which they were going backwards. Um, so I'm going to pick two points from that line, the set, third section, and I'm going to use the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to do the change very carefully. Okay, y2 is the second coordinate, that's where they ended up, that's 35 meters, and the, initial, and the x2, that was at 200 seconds, okay, minus 60 meters, which is where they started off at the 100 seconds. So this gives me a change of minus 0 0.25 meters per second. That makes sense because they're going backwards, so it should be a negative velocity. Example two, the graph shows a displacement time graph for a car moving along a straight track. Describe the journey, uh, support your answer with calculations. Okay, so keep in mind, the gradient of this displacement time graph represents the velocity. Okay, let's start at displacement of zero at time t equals zero. And you can see the steepness here, the gradient is zero. So that means initially they're not moving at all, they're at rest. Okay, so the car is starting from rest, but then you can see the gradient, the steepness is increasing. That means they're accelerating because remember the steepness represents the velocity. So if it's getting steeper, that means the velocity is increasing. Okay, after 3.5 seconds, it kind of reaches a steady steepness and it's quite steep, but it's a steady steepness. So that means there's a constant velocity during that part. Okay, let's figure out the velocity, they should actually calculate it because we're asked to support your answer with calculation. So I'm going to pick two points on that straight section and I'm going to use it to calculate the velocity. Once again, y2 minus uh, y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 here is around 105, my, and that's at a time of 5.5 seconds. And x2 is around 30, and that's at a time of 3.5 seconds. So that gives me a speed of 37.5 meters per second. And this is the fastest section of that journey because that's the steepest point on the graph. Okay. And after that, you can see the steepness starts to decrease. The gradient is decreasing and actually levels off. So that means the car is decelerating, is slowing down, and eventually it reaches rest. And it reaches a rest at a distance or displacement from the start of 130 meters. So it, the y value there is 130 meters. That means it stopped there and they're not moving any further. Yeah, final example. A student throws a ball vertically up into the air. The ball lands on the floor in front of him, ignoring air resistance and letting the upward direction be positive. Sketch a displacement time graph for the ball when it is released until it hits the ground. Okay, so the person's throwing it up. So that means he's going to leave his hand at pretty high velocity. 
and because of gravity the deceleration due to gravity is going to slow down and eventually at the very top the vertical velocity will be zero because remember it has to stop in order to turn around and come back down and it's actually being just decelerated for the whole motion okay then it's going to start speeding up in the downward direction and actually it's going to go be, when it goes below his hand where it left his hand it's actually going to be faster because all of that gravitational potential energy it had because of his height is now turned to extra kinetic energy and it's going to hit the ground faster okay let's take his hand starting point as zero displacement as a x equals zero okay so we'll mark a point here at t equals zero and um, displacement of zero okay then afterwards at the very top let's say it goes around um around 12 meters okay this is just a sketch so it had to be exactly precise okay and then what it should take the amount the same amount of time to come back down so it's going to come back down to his same height as his hand a vertical displacement of zero and then it's going to go beyond it okay so i've Mark the points like this. Now I'm going to focus on the gradient. So because it left his hand quite a high velocity, I need to have a steep gradient at the start, and it's going to slow down. So the gradient should start decreasing, and at the very top, the gradient should be zero. Okay, because it stops for a fraction of a second. Okay, and then the gradient is going to become negative because it's going downwards, which is defined as negative. Okay, so it's and then it's getting faster and faster, and eventually it's actually going to be even steeper than when it left his hand. Okay, so and if you join this, you get a parabolic curve like so.